want you to take your Bible and turn to 1 Kings, 20th chapter, and verse 13 and 14. 1 Kings, 20th chapter, verse 13 and 14. Give you a chance to get there. Appreciate you being here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, the king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, that I have seen all this great multitude. Behold, I will deliver under thy hand this day. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Verse 14. Notice what Ahab says. And Ahab said, By whom? We find it also in 1 Kings 21-25. Ahab is one of the worst and most wicked kings that Israel ever had. He was bad. And not only that, his wife was bad. And the scripture says that she stirred him. And he was wicked. And the dog licked his blood when he died. And ate Jezebel all but her hands. That's how wicked they was. But here, we have an army of 30-something kings. You rest to read up the rest of that story. They're coming against him with 100,000 troops. And Ahab has done told him, I'll give you all the gold and the silver. I'll clean out the house of God. I'll give you all of those things. But then all of a sudden, a prophet from God shows up. How many are glad when the time of trouble, God always shows up amen praise god i'm going to share with you this morning about suddenly and immediately but ahab says by whom in other words he didn't think brother james that that mass hundred thousand so plus troops chariot back then a chariot was about like a brand a bradley armor tank today but who's going to be able brother Melvin to do this who by whom will be able to defend me if you like me I would have just let that army just kill old Ahab and Jezebel but how many know that God's mind is not like our mind here he is going to help the man that had been killing his prophets and things like that he's going to help him I mean, you know that God is no respect of person. You take the most evil, wicked person in this world, God will have mercy on them. You ought to say amen. I guarantee you, I'm glad that God had mercy on me. The mercy of God. But he wants to know by whom. If you wish to read on down, the prophet said, said by young men. By young men. Now, we're not going to preach this subject about young men this morning, but we're going to preach that whosoever will, Yield themselves to God. God will use that individual. Whether you're young or whether you're old. I don't know about some of you old people, but you, if you're saying it, you ought to stop saying, I'm used up. You don't know how much more left in you that God. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Some people say, well, let the youth do it. They got strength. That's not what God is saying. God says, I can use you if you will allow me because it's not your strength I'm looking for. It's your availability, what I can work through and do through you. So we have a wonderful story here. And the prophet said from the Lord, I will deliver you. I will. How many believe the Lord will deliver you in the crisis in your life? We're going to share this morning that we're going to start expecting when we pray something happens. Amen? We're going to stop 
stop this saying well, we got to pray harder and we got to pray longer. We gonna, I can't stop you from doing that, but I'm, I, I don't do that. I'm expecting something to happen. When I pray, the Bible is full of when they prayed, God shows up immediately and does something. Amen. Sister Diane had a wonderful conversation last week. I, Charles Spurgeon was known the prince of all preachers of his time. Started when he was about 17. Built a huge church. But nearly after every Sunday service, he went into a state of depression. His wife would have to read to him on Sunday afternoon. There's times that you're going to go through some things that you wish you didn't have to. But I want you to know that God is in the delivering business today. You say, who can deliver me of this tragedy, this what's in my life? By whom? We're going to get to that in a minute. God always has what he can do to deliver us. Even though Ahab was wicked, he was very wicked, but God said, I'm, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to deliver you. Let's read in John. Let's go there in John. Glory to God. St. John, the ninth chapter. If you would, please. Praise God. Ninth chapter, verse 1 through 12. Give you a chance to get there. 32 kings, horses and chariots, come against him. Ahab. But God sent a prophet. How many know that God is never late? He has never been late. Samuel asked Saul, why have you done this? Why have you offered these sacrifices? He said, I thought you was late and you wasn't coming. It cost Saul the kingdom to get in the head of God. It cost him the kingdom. Don't get ahead of God. And waiting is not our best long suit. Huh? Fast food has ruined our patience on waiting. We drive through that window and say, I want a hamburger and a fries and a Coke, and we expect when we pull around on the other side that thing to jump out in us. And if it doesn't, Brother Powell told me one time they didn't get it out in three minutes. That's their goal, to get it out in three minutes. Said that guy drove around, and we didn't have it ready. When he drove around, he threw it at us when we handed it out to it. He threw it back at us. It pays to wait on God. He knows what's best. By whom? Let's read this here. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus says, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but the works of God should be manifested in him. The reason we have problems sometimes is because God wants to manifest himself in the midst of that situation where the world can see there's a God on our side. There's a God that's going to help us. Misquoted that, didn't I? He is not going to help you. He's already helped you. Let, let me get on that just a little bit. We've got to start believing that when Ephesians 1 said, when you were saved, you received up into glory and sat down at the right hand of Jesus is already sitting at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. We've got to come to the place and stop saying, this and that say, I am living in a heavenly place. That's where we are. That's the kind of children we are. If we keep saying that, this is a new year. Last year was a terrible year, right? Huh? No? What about this year? How's this start now? We got to know that God is with us, and if God is with us, nothing can be what? Now, my house needs a miracle. Peggy needs a miracle. Starlin needs a miracle. 
I don't know about you, but I believe you need a miracle. Huh? You need a miracle. We're going to have some miracles. He said, neither has sinned. I'm going to read the rest of that. Neither has sinned that the glory of God might be manifested in him. 1 Samuel 3 and 1 said the child Samuel ministered unto Eli. They really don't know, the scholars do not agree how old he was. But they all will agree that he's just a boy. Just a baby boy. But he comes into this world by the cause of a praying mother. Hmm? I'm t- Church prayers will ch- change. I started winning tonight Bible study. Faith can change your world. Faith will change your world when you live in faith. This boy was just a child, but God was speaking to him in a time when God was not speaking to nobody else. And the reason he wasn't speaking, because the church was corrupt and full of evil. Leaders was evil. Don't talk about the world. But the Bible said it was rare for God to even speak. But he chose a boy. I'm looking at some of you that if you'll let God have his way in your life, he'll use you mightily, not because of what you've passed is. I read an article the other day where this guy had got saved. He said he was one of the greatest sinners there was and said he'd been saved, but now I'm having so much problems. I know the Lord is punishing me because I was such a sinner. I'm telling you, the devil of hell is accusing him. God does not punish nobody after they become a Christian. Your sins are wiped away by the blood of the Lamb made whiter than snow. When you come up as a Christian, you are a newborn creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. God does not bring that up again to you and again. He does not accuse you again after that. The devil is accuser of the brethren night and day. And Diane, I talked about this. You can get a word from God like that, a spirit word from God. If you're not careful, the first thing you know, the devil jumps on that and steals it right out of your heart. Some people say, well, the devil's mad at me. The devil ain't mad at you. He don't, he don't he cares nothing about you. You say, why is he giving me so much trouble? Because he's after the word that's inside you. Let me share something else with you. When you read the Bible, it says the word, put an S in front of it. Put an S in front of the word. What does that spell? Sword. When you speak the word of God, you speak in a sword. You speak in power and authority against the enemy. The devil's going to accuse you. He gets the seed out of your heart. You have no weapon against him. Glory to God. He was born this way. I know I mentioned this before, but Starla, when she had her surgery in Little Rock, could nobody be with her. Her mother and daddy, could nobody be with her. There she was in that hospital all along, such a young girl, facing such surgery as cancer by herself. But she said, I've never in my life felt such peace come on my heart. By whom is this going to happen? Brother Don kept saying it, by Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the one by whom we don't need nobody else. We need him. Ian Bounds in his book of prayers about that thick. He said, you don't need no new machinery. You don't need no new instruments. God does not move through machinery. God does not move through instruments. God moves through human beings. He works through the individuals. By whom? God used Samuel to talk victory and give a voice of victory. There was 400 years of silence from Matthew to Malachi. God never spoke. Nobody never heard from God. No one heard from God. By whom is this going to be? 
Here comes a boy out of the manger. They made false accusation against him. Said that's Mary and Joseph's boy. He's born illegitimate. What good can ever come out of Nazareth? Now, Jesus was not a Nazarene, even though he came out of Nazareth. Don't get, don't get confused there. He was not no Nazarene. He came through Nazareth. That didn't make him a Nazarene. And this is Joseph, and Mary's boy. He even gets so beside of himself, he loses his mind. The family has to come and get him sometime and take him home. He said he's lost his mind. I guess sometimes the world thinks us Christians have lost our mind. But I tell you, there's no better way to lose your mind and lose it to Christ and take on his name and take on him. Right? Yes. You know, if it come up from your leg, it's supposed to be from the devil. Huh? John Osteen had a lot of heart medical conditions in his life. He died with some of them. Had miraculous healing ministries, but he never was healed. But he felt so bad in a meeting one time, he went out into the hall. And there was this man that was anointed to heal. And he was praying for people that were sick. And they was all getting healed, getting healed. And when he laid his hands on John Oldstein, Brother Peel, he said, the power of God come up from the bottom of his feet, come up into his thighs and come up into his knees, working his way up. And he said, this is not of God. This is of the devil. And when he did, did that, the power left him. From that day forth on, he never was healed. Listen, God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. He's a miracle-working God. By whom is going to be able to deliver this blind boy? Surely not Jesus, born in a manger, born illegitimate. But the Bible said he had all power in heaven and in earth. Who can deliver you today? Jesus. He's here. I feel him. How many brought him with you? Some people come to church to get a blessing. Some people come to bring the blessing. We got to be people that come with the blessing. Of course, if you need a blessing, we're going to pray for you this morning for you to get a blessing. Amen? The other day I was up here and so much noise going on down on that end. I got in that family center in there and got my Bible. And how many of you ever had something just come out of the Word of God and just, just come up on you? And, and if I was reading in the four Gospels, and I know I've read it before, but the Spirit of the Lord began to show me what an awesome God. Jesus Christ is. If you read the full gospel, and we're going to go through some of that in the book of Acts, everything Jesus did was immediately. Immediately this blind man was healed. We're going to start expecting immediately things when we pray that something is going to happen immediately and suddenly. Something is going to change right then and there. And I know the Bible teaches perseverance, holding on to God. But some of the Bible scholars said the woman that went to the unjust judge didn't go continually. She went one time. She had this face set so strong. If you don't give me what I want now, I'm going to drive you crazy. Hmm? John Osteen said, I'd rather have a thousand men after me than one woman. Huh? Listen, we got to be persistent when we go before him. We got to be determined when we go before him. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you what? 
He threw his thigh out of joint. And from that day forward, Israel never ate a thigh off of a cow or anything because of that. He was a cripple the rest of his life. He never walked right again. But I tell you, he held on to God. He said, let me go. Daylights are coming. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. How many know that ought to be our cry this morning? I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go until I hear what you have promised in your word. I'm going to hold on until that happens in my life. By whom is this going to happen? By whom is going to do it? Jesus. Jesus. By whom? John the Baptist had never seen Jesus Christ. They was first cousins. They have never met one another. But he looked up one day, was baptizing. He said, there he comes, right yonder. He saw Jesus coming. He said, this son of God that's going to take away the sins of the world. The devil is the author of sin. He's the author of sickness. Peggy and I was talking about this the other day in some length. But the scripture said, and Jesus came to destroy the works of of the devil that's what he came for to destroy the works of the devil by whom is this going to happen by Jesus Christ of Nazareth John saw him coming please ask 9 14 and 5 said there was this little city it was compassed about by a great and mighty army Brother Arnie, they didn't know what they was going to do. They knew destruction was at hand. But all of a sudden, how many know that God all of a sudden, it didn't say all of a sudden, I'm putting that in there. But all of a sudden, a little old man came forward and gave them the words that would save that city. Some of you little old people, you think you're old. God may give you a word that could save a whole city. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That is not as much as a shadow of turning in him. He is no respect of person. He's no respect of person. I believe God. Excuse me a minute. He can cause a donkey to talk to his master. You know, that would get you would get your attention. If you had a donkey and he started talking to you, how I many of that would get your attention? That would get your attention. If he can cause a raven, which is an unclean bird, to fly three times a day to Ahab's table and get a piece of beefsteak that Elijah liked, he liked it rare, he'd get a piece of rare beefsteak and carry it to him and fed him three times a day. How much more God, God use you and I to do the work that he's called for us to do. Some people sometimes tell me, well, if God wanted to, he could. He can't. I'm, I'm sorry, church. He can't. He can't. He's charged us with that authority to work in his place while he's gone. And he's here inside of us. I believe he's here. How many believe he's in you? You don't have to pray for him to come. He's already in you. We got to learn to pray to release him what he wants to do. By whom is this going to happen? I read just the other day this woman's a missionary. I can't pronounce her last name. I asked Peggy if she, she can pronounce anything, but I think that and stumped her. But anyhow, Becky, she was a missionary in the foreign fields. Got up one morning, had her morning devotion, and prayed, and went out. Was going through this crowd, and this man lightly brushed up against her, and she said, I'm sorry. He fell down. She went over where he was, and she knelt down where he was. And another woman came over and knelt down beside her said, do you know who this is? She says, no, I don't know that man. 
said, that's the witch doctor of death. He came for the reason to touch you this morning with his authority and his power to bring death in your life and the end of your ministry. How many know that he that liveth in you is greater than he that liveth in this world? The devil cannot perform anything against us except. Thank you. See how the Lord's working it back for us, don't he? No weapon can be formed against you because Christ lives inside you. The battle's not ours. The battle belongs to him. Praise God. By whom he's going to do this? A little old man. Saved a city that nobody thought could be saved. He just stepped out of nowhere, and God blessed him. Says, by my spirit, saith the Lord. He's the one that does the work. He's the one that sets captives free. And Jesus saves, and he heals. Jesus said, I must work the works of my Father. It's Father's will that not any man perish. That's his will, that nobody perish in any form whatsoever. It's not his will that he perish. The twelve was not the only one in the four gospels that healed the sick, cast out demons, and raised the dead. They're not the only one. The reason I'm bringing this to you because some people are going to tell you that when the apostles died, miracles died. Jesus has not died. Huh? He has said you can do nothing without me, a black, a hair, a white. You cannot make your statue one inch. If God doesn't build the temple, this. And if he doesn't keep the temple, this. We all labor in vain. Jesus anointed 70 and two more, making 72 with the same authority to do what? What did he give this 70 the same authority? That he gave the 12. They cast out demons, they healed the sick, and they raised the dead. You'll find that in the four Gospels. You say, well, the apostles died. They did. You say, well, the 70 died. They did, but God is not dead. Jesus is not dead. He said, I once was dead. I mean, you know, we all was once dead in the trespasses of sin until Jesus came. He brought us out of a dark life of sin and saved us. Amen? Some Christians mess up and they do penance you should never do penance if you mess up you should do repentance how long does it just take to get forgiveness that quick if you mess up you say God forgive me he didn't accuse you they brought the woman a very act of adultery he said where are your accusers she said I don't have any he said I don't accuse you neither but go your way and don't sin no more. He will not accuse you. He will forgive you. And his blood will keep you pure and clean as long as you live for Christ and walk with him. He said, I must work the work of my Father that has sent me. So he anointed these people. John 21 and 25. And all the works that Jesus did was written in books. Somebody tell me what the rest of that says. If all the things that Jesus did while he was on earth were written in books, the world couldn't what? Couldn't hold the books. And Jesus did that in three and a half years. What awesome power Jesus Christ had. And he's made that available to us. He has set us in heavenly places. That don't mean you're going to be exempt from troubles and trials and adversities and things like that. 
but you're set in heavenly places. Works after Jesus went back to heaven. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And works after the apostles had died. Talk about that a little bit, the 12. Acts 6 and 8. Now the apostles had told them to go out to the church and pick out some men to serve tables. To wait on tables. To serve the people. Everyone that's in the service business in the church, if you're a teacher, if you're a deacon, or if you're an usher, you should be filled with the Holy Ghost. You should be filled with faith. You should be filled with power. This is one of the qualifications they had to have. Stephen had to have this qualification. He met those qualifications. He may have still been serving tables, but he changed. God will not always leave you where he finds you if you'll allow him to lead you. Stephen is allowing Christ to lead him. I want you to notice what he did. He's not one of the twelve, but he's anointed, just like you and I. He's anointed. And the scripture says in verse 8, chapter 6, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. The twelve was not the only one did what? Here is a man that the church members had picked. The church picked him, not the apostles. The apostles laid their hands on and prayed for him. But the church picked him. And then verse 10 says, They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by what Stephen spoke. you know the Bible said that every word that God spoke to Samuel as he laid there by the ark, just a child, the Bible said he let not one word fall to the ground. Then it goes on to say every word that Samuel ever spoke come to what? Come to pass. I'd like to get that way. Wouldn't you like to get that way? Huh? Walk so close to God. And God gives you a word to somebody and you give them that word and it comes to pass. God has not changed. He's still the same. I was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am not the God of the dead. I'm the God of the living. Samuel went down in the history, the most colorful prophet that ever lived. He started the schools of prophets. They were there during the times of Elijah and Elisha. But he started that. By whom is this going to happen? We was at a conference one time in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. This guy was preaching. He preaching. He was evangelist. He told him about a church he was preaching at. And... Uh, came down to be prayed for to receive the Holy Ghost. And these women walked up there and laid their hands on him. And they prayed for a little while. This woman stopped them all from praying. She said, let's stop a minute. She said, she looked at him and said, what's wrong with you? She said, we laid our hands on you. You're supposed to receive the Holy Ghost. She said, what's hindering you? He said, my teeth. I got false teeth. They're pinching me. He said, I don't remember. I think she might have, but anyhow, she said, you get them teeth out of your mouth and lay them up here on this altar. We're going to pray for you again. Hmm? How many of you remember down at the old church? This tall guy come in there, come down to the front. Paula McCourt, you know, reached way up there and touched him when she did. The Holy Ghost fell on him. Huh? By whom? Is God going to use? Could it be you? Could it be me? Who is he going to use? You say, well, I've really been too bad. 
The Apostle Paul said, I'm the chiefest of all sinners. I'm the worst of the worst. But he goes down in history, the greatest apostle that's ever walked the face of this earth. Because God used him. By whom? He used a little old man to save a city. He used a little old boy. T.L. Osborne died not too long ago. Had a dynamic ministry in the foreign field. Started preaching at 17. And God used him mightily. A child shall lead them. Childlike spirit, childlike attitude shall lead them. I'm losing my place here. Let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just back up here just a minute. What about Philip? The church picked Philip to serve tables. Apostles laid their hands on him. And the Bible said, Acts 6, and verse 8, Philip, full of Holy Spirit, wisdom, and faith. He was full of faith, wisdom, and the Holy Spirit. And Philip went down to Samaria to preach where no Jew would never go. A Jew would walk a miles around the territory of Samaria to stay away from him. That's how bad the prejudice was against him. Persecution was so bad they had to leave Jerusalem. They were scattered everywhere. Everywhere, the Bible said, they were scattered everywhere. But they went everywhere preaching Christ. And Christ went with them. This is after the resurrection. Confirming the word with signs, miracles, and wonders. Philip goes down to Samaria where no Jew would go. But he went down there and the Bible said, and he preached Christ. And that whole city... I don't know about you, but this convicts me, me being a minister. Been here a long time, and I'm not seeing those kind of things. I want to see them. I want you to be able to see them. The Bible said that whole city was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They was healed of all their sickness. Demons was cast out. These were not members of the 12 apostles. They were members of the church that had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, full of faith and full of power. By whom? We used to sing a song, Who will be next to face eternity? Let me sing that around. Who's going to be next that God is mightily used for his glory and for his honor? You say, I can't heal anybody. Stephen, Philip, never healed anybody. It was the power of God in them, released out of them, that done the work. Even Jesus said, even Nicodemus was a ruler, came by Jesus by night. He tells him, we know the things you're doing, you cannot be doing of yourself. It has to be God in you, through you, doing these things. He said, we know that. So God mightily used these people. By whom? By whom? Philip had an amazing life. The angel talked to him, told him to go down to the, the desert and wait. Ethiopian come by. He didn't know why he went down there. Brother James, have you ever been called somewhere since you're in the mission field? You didn't know why you went? Huh? Brother Wellman, when he moved his family to Brazil, got off the plane, his son said, Daddy, where are we? He said, Don, son, I don't know. I've got no idea where we at. But God told him to go where? To Brazil, and that's where he died. Spent his life there in Brazil. Because God had called him. So we have here. Some people kid me that I don't want to leave Cash County. They ain't got nothing to do with it. I am a Cass County born, and I'm going to plan on dying here. God has not called me over there. God has called me here. 
I may believe that God has called you here. You can be just as anointed here as you can anywhere else because God is the same. He's the same. Great joy was in that city. And not only that, the Philippian Ethiopian was baptized and went on his way rejoicing. Then what happened to Philip? Huh? Do what? How did he go? Everybody hear what Brother Arnie's saying? If you open went on his chariot on his way back home down to the south, didn't see him again. The Spirit took him away 18 or 20 miles away, just lifted him up. And people said, oh, I don't believe that foolishness. Well, you probably don't believe you're going to rise up and go to heaven. How many know you're going to leave this world one of the days feel Christian in what? In a twinkling of an eye. Sister Linda, that's going to be a marvelous thing for you to be alive. And he comes back and Aunt May and your daddy just jumps up out of that grave and just zips up past you. I'm telling you, faster than the speed of light, but you're going to catch up with them. The, come on now, if God can do that with a dead person, how can he do that in us today? While we are yet alive, how come he can't work in us like he wants to? Praise God. Peggy said she's not going to die. She said, I don't want nobody throwing no dirt in my face down in that cold grave. She said, I'm going to be here to go up in the resurrection. That's a good thought, you know it? That's a good thought. Just be caught up in the air with him in the twinkling of an eye. As Brother Arnie pointed out, as the Spirit moved them and they come up out of the water, the Ethiopian went on his way, but Philip went on his way in the Spirit. Scholars believe that the Queen of South went back and told what miraculous things she saw from Solomon and said the half has not even been told. That's why that Ethiopian had been passed down through the centuries. That's why he was up there. He went up to Jerusalem. To worship the one true Almighty God. Almighty God. Well, it's time to close and go home. But let's talk about another man. His name is Barnabas. Now, they can't prove this, but they believe, the scholars believe this, that Barnabas is the man that came to Jesus. And asked him, said, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus tells him, he said, well, I've done all that. Jesus says, you like one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor. I believe that Jim Rome, who's a multimillionaire, Late in his church one day told him, said, you know, Mr. Rome, it's hard for rich men to go to heaven. He said, I know that, but said, I love a hard channel. That's what, what God was talking about. He, he, he wasn't talking about that. He was really telling this rich man, you got to follow me. Why would he, we've we got to understand the word of God. It's God that gives you power to get what? Wealth. And if he gives you power to get wealth, why would he tell you to sell it all? Now, scholars believe that's Barnabas. Oh, glory to God. I don't know where we and the Holy Ghost making any sense to you this morning. But if God can change Naomi to go back home and carry Ruth with him, God can change Barnabas. And you'll find in the book of Acts, he's the first one that sold some land and gave to the apostles. And here we find him an encourager. God is, has the ability to change people. To change people. How many of you have been changed? I've been newborn. I've been changed. Praise God. A lady walked up to Jesse Duplantis one time and said, I'd like to know you before you got the Holy Ghost. He said, you wouldn't, know, you wouldn't like to know me before I got the Holy Ghost. But his wife kept at him going to church. He was a doper. 
I don't know what all he said he was. He said, I got to church. He said, I had a pocket full of money. After service, the preacher was talking to him. He said, I pulled out a pocket full of money to give it to him. And the preacher said something smart about him. So he just reached out and took the money back away from him, put it back in his pocket and walked out. God changes people. How many glad he changed you? Made you a new creature. Made you all over again. Oh, he's in the changing business. Here we find Barnabas. Let me find my scripture. Barn, Acts 11, 21, 24. The Bible said he was a good man. He was full of the Holy Ghost. He was full of faith. And when he brought a considerable amount of people to Christ. Considerable amount of people to Christ. Let me read you from Ephesians 3.20. Now the him that is able to do immeasurable more than all you ask or can imagine, according to the power that is at work within you, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, throughout of all the generations, forever and ever. Now the word immeasurable more is a double compound in the Greek. And it means this, super, super abundantly more. You find it also in 1 Thessalonians 3.10 and also 1 Thessalonians 5.13. His power that is at work in us. His power has been released in us. The power that raised him out of the grave, he's released it in us. So by whom? Ahab said, by whom will be able to deliver me from this hundreds of thousands of soldiers, 32 kings, iron chariots, and horsemen? The prophet said, the young people, 200 of them, will deliver you. Who could deliver this city out of the hand of this mighty army? A little old man. You mean over one word from God? Scientists say in one drop of water, it's got enough energy in it to blow up. I forgot what, what side building. Just one drop of water could dro blow up a, a large building. Just think what the Holy Ghost in us can do. Washed us away, and I'm going to quit and let you go home. If you need prayer, we're going to ask you to come. We're going to believe Suddenly, and I'm going to ask you to look in the four Gospels, look in the book of Acts. Suddenly, immediately. What happened when the woman, the issue of blood, had it, what, 18 years? And when she touched the hem of the garment, what happened? Shouted out loud. Suddenly, immediately. He looked around one time and saw this woman said, why is this woman a child of Abraham? Bent over like this, immediately.